Hi there, Megan here. Welcome to Fresh's monthly Brain Boost professional development session. Um, we are here to share two new strategies with you um, for the next few weeks, as well as to go over some of the feedback that we received for the last two strategies that you all piloted. That was the Alaska strategy and the squat challenge. So as usual, I'm going to start by just reviewing with you guys some of the feedback that you all shared. And um, I just want to thank you all for your continued participation, getting ever so closer to the end of the school year. And so for those of you um, who are still hanging in there with us and still getting all of these done each month and taking the time to get these surveys open and share with us what's working and what's not, we really appreciate it. So let's just get going here. So for the Alaska challenge, um, a lot of folks really um, enjoyed that it was just a different variation to a very familiar game for students um, because of the different animals and uh, who beat who. It was a little bit confusing sometimes, but also required a little bit more focus and concentration than traditional rock, paper, scissors. So some folks suggested that a classroom poster depicting um, what beat what um, would be helpful. So that's certainly something that we can work on on our end and have included in our final package of material. Um, those of you who mentioned that there was some confusion um, shared also that that did help lighten the mood. So even though folks might not have really uh, always remembered which moves to do or who would win, it still made people kind of a little silly and a little lighthearted, which was helpful. Um, some folks found that it was really helpful to use because of that little element of silliness um, after testing period. So when kids had been sitting down for long periods of time, um, a lot of folks, and I loved this, a lot of folks uh, mentioned that this is a great exercise to get kids thinking about other animals or other habitats, so ways to make their own variation of this rock, paper, scissors format using a jungle theme or an ocean theme or a desert theme. Um, one of our art teachers shared that in the art classroom, they um, did a variation with paint, scissors, clay. And so just all sorts of ways to kind of get fun with this and personalize it um, and also tie into, depending on what you're teaching and the grade levels you're teaching, um, material related to ecosystems and food chains. So um, for older, Folks dealing with older students um, didn't love the dance move. So because <laughs> some of the kids were trying to lose on purpose so that they didn't have to dance. Um, so that's something where you can always sub in a different activity if you think that your class is not going to be very receptive to doing a dance move. Um, you can just pick another movement instead. Uh, the idea is just to keep them moving. Um, Loved this suggestion. So again, an older high school level classroom, but really could work um, with any classroom, um, regardless of age. They took sort of the concept of March Madness and did a bracket with this activity. So started with everybody playing against each other and then narrowing it down into a final winner that they crowned the Alaska champion for the classroom. So that was super fun. Um, Moving on for the squat challenge, this one was kind of hit or miss, um, hit in the sense that it got kids up, it got them moving, um, miss in the sense that it, it really wasn't fun, so to speak. Um, so it required a little bit more of thinking outside the box on ways to keep kids engaged. Um, one of the teachers suggested that the way she added a fun element into it was to get students to challenge one another to see who could get um, closest to the ground during the squats. Um, or another suggestion was to have the students compete against the teacher to see if they could keep up with the pace that she was keeping. Um, this one was a fan favorite, though, for being super easy to implement without any advanced planning. So you've got kids, they look restless, and you think that they need a little pick-me-up. This one's very easy to just kind of pull out and, and do very quickly. Um, that being said, for classrooms where AV material isn't always re readily accessible, because you do have the video that kind of points the arrows up and down. If you wanted to do this without that plug and play, you know, some teachers suggested that they just point it up, point it down to guide the students. Or even if you had a classroom poster where you could do the arrows up and down, that would avoid the need to have um, a video up in the classroom. 
some folks found that sharing that photo of the athlete doing the squat that was provided in the um, curriculum materials was helpful because some people just didn't know the correct, some of the students didn't know the correct form to use. And so that was helpful, just making sure that folks didn't get silly or injure themselves or anything out that, like that. Uh, this was a really good suggestion. So some students um, might not have liked the squats just if they're not very like exercise um, inclined. And so one teacher just turned it into calf raises instead. And so um, told the students, you know, if you don't want to do the squat, that's fine, but let's get up and let's still like lift up and down and do calf raises just again to get the students up and out of their chairs and moving. So again, lots of really great feedback here. Um, keep it coming as we look to um, introduce the next two strategies. I believe we've got these two and then two more. Um, and then we're gonna be wrapped up for the school year. So thank you, thank you. I'm gonna turn it over to Pam now and uh, look forward to hearing from you guys again next month. Hi everyone, happy spring um, and welcome to the second to the last Brain Boost professional development uh, recording. We will have one more in April and then May is our last meeting of the year and that one will be live via Zoom. Megan had sent out an email survey just asking for your opinion on what a good date for that would be. We realized, um, thanks to some feedback from all of you, that um, it is the Fauquier High School graduation on the day that we originally planned, which was um, April's, I'm sorry, May 16th. So we are changing that and asking for some feedback. So if you haven't already um, completed the survey to let us know what date works for you, I know that we were looking at um, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of the week prior, and that would have been, um, let's see, uh, da, 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 da. Mm, if I can get my calendar up, that is the 8th, 9th, and 10th of May. So if you could just, um, again, shoot that email, that survey back to Megan if you haven't already done so. And then unfortunately, I know that's not going to be best for everyone and it's not something that we've planned for, but we will pick kind of the majority rules on that one. Before we get into the next uh, surveys for this month, which are 123 Show and Card Sharks, I just wanna give you some wellness leader updates for the um, weeks ahead. The first is um, the Fresh on Wheels activity trailers. We have the calendar. I know I've sent you that link in the monthly wellness updates and responsibilities email. That calendar is filling up fast. There's a lot of springtime, end of school year events happening at schools. So if you have not yet decided on, um, you know, or filled out the form for an event that you're planning on this spring, do so as soon as possible. Um, the trailers go out for a week at a time. So the time really gets blocked off of when we can get it to another school. So uh, we just appreciate it. If you're looking ahead, you know, get that out, that form filled in as soon as possible to get on the calendar. They are filled, you know, first come first serve on request. So, um, you know, maybe if you can think if something you're planning is flexible and can have a backup date, that would be great also. Um, let's see, we have the Every Kid Healthy Community Picnic coming up on April 22nd, Saturday. There will be a food truck there with tacos, um, some ice cream, some, you know, all the fresh events, different uh, community partners all coming together. The flyer has been sent out, um, but it's a good reminder, you know, push it out and remind um, teachers to push it out to the students at the school. Um, pep rallies are coming from Fresh. We are kicking off um, our summer events by doing pep rallies at all the elementary schools. So Fresh staff will come around and kind of drum up a little bit of excitement, share some plans for the summer. Every child at every elementary school will get a bag filled with a couple of goodies and lots of handouts from us and community partners just you know, showing schedules and things that are planned over the summer from um, various agencies. But we are looking forward to another fun-filled summer with our fresh events. I think that might be it as far as updates are concerned. Um, again, I know you're all getting, still getting the frontline emails. We tried, we can't turn it off because it seems like turning it off actually then 
separates our ability to give you credit, PD credit for these. So next year, we're going to set it up differently. We're not going to put it in front line as something that we'll collect and then just push in, uh, create like a one-time event at the very end to add your professional development points to. So I apologize for that, but we still have a couple more months of getting those frontline um, emails. But again, you don't have to do anything. No logging in is necessary. Even for our live one, we I will send you that PD link, the Zoom link. You won't need to go into frontline to get the link. So there's no reason that you need to log into frontline for anything pertaining to these um, wellness leader meetings. And with that, I think it covers everything that we have for updates. Um, I hope you enjoy the strategies that we have for this month. We really do appreciate the feedback that you're sending in. And we are working on capturing all of that in our curriculum packages that we're putting together for the end of this um, video e grant cycle, which ends in June. So we should have those all packaged up and put on the website over the summer. Take care. I hope you all have a great rest of the week. And again, like always, let us know if you need anything. We're here to help. Thanks. This is 123 Show. 123 Show is an activity centered around collaboration and communication. In this activity, students will partner with a classmate. To start, Teachers will display the 123 show exercise list to the students. Each number will have an exercise listed. Students will grab a partner and begin with challenging their partner in a rock, paper, scissors manner. They will say 123 show while hitting a fist against the palm of their other hand. On the word show, the students will show one to five fingers. Students will complete the exercises that correspond to each number shown, communicating with one another to decide which exercise to do first. After finishing the exercises, students will find a new partner. This is the Card Sharks Brain Boost. In Card Sharks, students will predict what the next card will show. The teacher will show the class a playing card. Students will give a thumbs up, thumbs down, or thumbs to the side to guess if the next card will be higher, lower, or the same as the current card. The teacher will then show the next card. If the student is correct in their guess, they perform five raise the roofs or a victory dance. If the student guessed incorrectly, they will do five squats. Using the current card, repeat the activity. In this activity, tens are less than jacks, jack is less than queen, queen is less than king, and ace is the highest card.